you know, let, let's talk about uh, something tangible here, which is which is debt. So back to the the earlier discussion around you know why they need to implement this this aggressive tax around unrealized capital gains is is the fact that we simply don't have enough money to pay for the spending, um, despite the fact we've had record revenue year after year after year. Um, you know, our debt continues to rise. You talked about this two episodes. Um, you know, we're at 29 trillion right now. Over the next 30 years, we have a baseline of 100 trillion in deficit spending because of uh, retiring boomers in Medicare, uh, Medicaid, and Social Security. Um, you know, do, do you have any opening thoughts on this? Because this is, to me, I'm biased here. This is, I think, the most important issue that we face as a country. I think it's the most important issue that nobody ever talks about. Um, I mean, how we, we keep hearing that deficits and debt doesn't matter. Uh, and in fact, you know, I, I, I'm, I still marvel at this because there's an entire school of economic thought called modern monetary theory that basically has put forward the idea that literally debt doesn't matter. Um, and so I, I, I was just yesterday, I was like Googling this and every single year for like the last 10 years, there are multiple, you know, op-eds written basically with the headline that debt doesn't matter. And it's just so incredibly irresponsible. I mean, debt doesn't matter until it suddenly matters. And then it matters. It's, it's kind of like that old saying about how did you go bankrupt slowly at first, then suddenly, um, <laughs> you know, d- 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 debt sort of matters slowly, then suddenly. Yep. And I think we're starting to see concern about it now because, Inflation has ticked up to 5.1%. It's the first time in a long time that we've had real inflation. And so the question is, well, how is the Fed going to fight it? Well, typically it would raise interest rates. But if interest rates go revert back to their historical uh, norm, something like 4.9%, I guess on the the 10-year treasury, then debt service would grow from 2% of the federal budget, which it is now, to 30% of the federal budget. So again, just raising interest rates back to their historical norm to fight inflation, if, if inflation persists, that would basically crowd out almost 30% of the federal budget. Um, think about like the choices we're going to have to face as a country at that point, where either you're going to have to have like you know massive austerity in the federal budget, or you're going to have to have, you know, massive tax increases, which do have a big impact on economic growth, or you're going to have to monetize the debt by printing, uh, by basically printing currency to pay for it, which would probably erode the dollar status as world's reserve currency and have hugely negative consequences. So, yeah, I mean, we're looking at a bunch of like not good options because we've incurred all this debt and, the question is why? I mean, why, why are we incurring this debt? It's not to fight World War II or something like that. We've incurred it mostly in peacetime. You know, we've gone from, um, you know, when Bill Clinton was president in the late uh, 90s, we had government surpluses and we were, you know, we were very close actually to paying off the national debt. A few more years of that and of surpluses, and I think we would have paid off the national debt. And instead, we've kind of, the last 20 years have been, a fiasco and both parties are to blame. I mean, George W. Bush kind of started it with, with all these, um, you know, I'd say foolish wars in the, in the middle East. We wasted trillions in the middle East on nation building, um, fighting these wars to liberate people who didn't want us to be there. Uh, that was a disaster. Um, and now we, you know, the progressives seem hell bent on spending far more on social programs than we have the, than we can afford. So, um, you know, both parties are sort of have have created this problem. Yeah, what's interesting, um, you know, to go back a little bit earlier is I've actually been a little bit surprised that there hasn't been like a Tea Party that has has sprung up, um, you know, before, you know, in in lieu of kind of these onerous uh, proposals from from the current administration, um, because they're really, you know, within the same vein of what happened last time. I think there's other factors that go into it, like the fact that we were in a recession at that time. Um, you know, you probably have different, uh, age demographics right now. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, right now it seems like the, the stakes are, are definitely higher yet. There isn't kind of this backlash right now, but the people in the tea parties back then, and this is, this is kind of what, uh, our last president saw tapped into is 
you know, th- they were just as mad at the, the, the GOP as they were at the, the Democrats. Um, and that's exactly how, you know, Trump won the nomination is because he saw that. Um, you know, the, the problem with the thing that people don't talk about in terms of uh, the debt uh, that really doesn't get out there as much is that we're, we're actually, you know, basically just rolling over our debt. So average maturity is 60 months on the debt. So we're not even locking in these rates. So basically we roll over our debt on average um, every five years. And what's going to happen is the entirety of the debt, that means, is basically going to be paid um, at these higher interest rates. Um, if they right. Arrive. Well, th- this, is, this is exactly why the Fed's degrees of freedom are so limited is because if they do want to combat inflation by raising rates, our debt service is going to go through the roof. Um, again, it'll go from 2% to 30% of the federal budget if they raise interest rates to the historical norm of 4.9%. I think I'm talking about the 10-year treasury. So this is the problem. I mean, Trump actually had an interesting idea uh, I don't really know why I didn't go anywhere, but I heard it floated a few years ago, which was to uh, lock in our debt at, at, to basically issue 100 year T bills. <laughs> you remember this? And so they could have locked yeah. in uh, when, when rates were at some insanely low number. I don't know why that never went anywhere, but it would have been a great idea to lock in, you know, at least 20 or 30 year rates when they were just at extremely low. I guess Trump being the real estate guy would kind of understand this principle. But yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't know why that was never done. And as a result, I think, yeah, we are going to be at the mercy. We're, we're going to be between a rock and a hard place. The, the rock being inflation and the the hard place being uh, debt service going through the roof if the Fed wants to raise rates to to fight inflation. Um, all, 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 all of which is to say that like piling on more debt yeah, right because- now just seems like the wrong idea. We had six trillion of deficit spending last year in the middle of COVID. Now the administration wants to spend another six trillion plus this year. Uh, the economy is doing great, by the way. I mean, we are in peacetime. The economy is booming. We've never had this kind of proposed deficit spending uh, in peacetime. And so, you know, what is the point of this? You know. Well, here's here's the upshot too. Uh, you know, there's there's kind of like this this meme that, that China owns all the debt, but foreigners, um, specifically China, have not bought uh, our debt in over ten years. So they they have stopped purchasing it. And in fact, um, even uh, domestic buyers who are now the 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 primary purchasers of our debt uh, ha- have stopped in terms of allowing the interest rate or keeping the interest rate low. Right. So the interest rate is being artificially held down by the fact that the Fed is now buying a majority of new debt issued. Yeah. So it's, uh, so, so it's now being th- those interest rates. That's, that's the scariest part is the interest rates are being artificially held down. Those aren't even market rates. So that's yeah. the inflation piece is they're going to have to continue to inflate, uh, inflate the value of the dollar in order to do that. Now, let, let me ask you this as someone who's gone out and raised, um, you know, billions of dollars in terms of, you know, LPs for craft and also your companies, you know, do you have any insight and also uh, shout out to the all in pod, you know, trading Japanese bonds or something during your, your poker game. Uh, do, do you have any insight into, um, you know, the, the credit markets in terms of the domestic demand for us treasuries right now? You know, I, I don't have any real special insight there. I mean, I don't really participate in markets from like a global macro perspective. We're just so micro, you know, I, it's true. We go out and raise money for our funds, but we're, we're just totally focused on investing in companies at the earliest stages. And we're pretty insulated from what's happening in, in the global markets. Um, but, uh, but yeah, look, you, you raise, you raise a great point here. You know, um, there's an interesting site here called usdebtclock.org, which everyone can go to. And um, it's kind of got this like uh, debt clock on the U.S. national debt, which is right now running at $28.9 trillion. The debt per citizen of the U.S. is $86,000. The debt per taxpayer in the U.S. is $229,000 per taxpayer. And, you know, this money has to be paid back. There's no – like all debt must be paid back at some point. And, um, you know, I, I just, the, the question is, why are we incurring so much debt? Why are we living beyond our means like this? Um, in terms of these like specific programs, 
I'm not really against like any of the specific programs. I just think we have to live within our means. And we have a great system in the US, which is we have a free enterprise system that generates prosperity and innovation and the economy keeps growing. And then government will get its take, which historically has been around 20%. Um, if you go back over the last 50 years, it squiggles up or down by about 2%, depending on whether you're in a recession or not. But it's amazing how consistent the federal share, the federal uh, tax receipts as a percentage of GDP are, even with wildly different uh, top marginal income tax rates. The federal government seems to get around 20% right. uh, of, of GDP. And we could discuss, there's a whole bunch of reasons why I think it's harder to go above that. But the point is, that the federal government will get its take of this growth. It will get roughly 20% of GDP. GDP keeps growing. That's the, the golden goose is the free enterprise system. And then that 20% will be used to fund basically the social safety net and progressive programs. I have no problem with that basic construct. That is the way I think it should work. Over time, as the economy gets bigger and bigger, we'll be able to fund more and more programs and we'll be able to be more and more generous with people over time and fund more and more things. But what doesn't work is when you break that system or upend it and you say you want to replace the free enterprise system with socialism, like that, wh why would you do that? I mean, it, it's really like a form of impatience, I guess, where if we're patient over time, the prosperity that the, this system, the American system will continue creating, will fund all the programs we need. But, you know, it just seems like people can't wait and they're willing to incur massive deficits and debt uh, now to pay for the programs at the risk of breaking the entire system. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see the, you know, if there's any good research on, I mean, it's, it's empirically true, right? So I'm looking at the chart now, it's 1940 to, to 2020, it, it always tops out at 20% at of federal revenue. So if we have a debt of 200% of GDP, which we will have soon, um, you know, paying it off with only 10%, which is, you know, 20% over 200% is just not, it's not going to happen without um, somehow becoming, uh, without soaking the middle class. But let's, uh, let, let, let's shift <laughs> gears here because I think people have, have gotten the point that they need to start paying attention <laughs> to debt. Yeah.